next. So here we have an excess of the Grignard reacting with ester. So let's see how that happens. So first we'll have the addition of one nuclear file, so a negative here. It's going to add here, pushing this up. So that will give us this intermediate minus. We have this and we have the benzene ring. Now after this, so we're going to get back these electrons and out of these two, it's either going to be this as a living group or this as a living group. So which one do you think is a better living group? If it goes according to this scheme right here, then we're going to get this, the carbonyl, this and this, so we end up having the starting material. However, it's not the problem. The molecules don't know if they are starting materials or products. The problem is that you get this negatively charged versus if this happens, then you're going to get this. So here the carbonyl, this has left and we have this. Plus now we have the ethoxide ion. So out of these two, you need to realize that this is a better living group. And therefore, this pathway is going to predominate. So that's the one addition of the Grignard. Now next, once you have this, it's a ketone. And remember, ketones are more reactive than esters. So here, you can abbreviate the phenyl ring as PH. So however, for now, I'll just draw them as they are. So now you have the addition of the second ring. And this is like the reaction with the ketones that we have seen. So this adds here. And again, we're getting this intermediate with two rings. So let's put pH, pH this time. And then we have the protonation. So H2O and this is going to be the final product, so we're going to get a tertiary alcohol. So phenyl, phenyl, and the proton from the water. Okay, so that's the reaction of the Grignard with esters. So remember, we have two additions there and turning the esters into tertiary alcohol. Therefore, that's going to be option A. And also I mentioned about the reactivity of esters and ketones. So this is what you need to remember. Let's say if you have an aldehyde, a ketone, and an ester. This is going to be the most reactive. So that's one. This is going to be the second. It's not as reactive as the aldehyde for two reasons. So one is the steric reason. So you have this extra carbon here with the hydrogen. So it's hindering the carbonyl. Second, remember that the alkyl groups have some electron donating abilities, which will also be enforced because of this electron withdrawing electron negativity of the oxygen. On the other hand, if you have an ester, you need to remember that the two oxygens are in resonance and the result of this is that this delta plus, this is remember delta minus, this is delta plus, is suppressed by the electron donating ability of the oxygen. So that's the mesomeric effect, giving the lone pairs to the carbon and therefore this is not as partially positive charge as it is in the ketones. So remember this is delta plus, delta minus. So therefore aldehydes are going to be the most reactive well, maybe not the most reactive because we also have acid chlorides. Let's not forget about them too. But out of these two, this is going to be the most reactive Then the ketones and then the esters are not very reactive. So the reason we mentioned this is in the first addition when we do the Grignard, remember after we have the first addition, we have the ketone now. And once the ketone is formed, there's no reason for it to not react with another equivalent of the Grignard because this now is more reactive than the starting material. 